Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Ashley with Brindle Babe Designs and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the easy knit cardigan. First off, I just want to thank Frills Crochet for providing the yarn to make this design happen. In this tutorial, I'm going to do the size medium. If you'd like to do a different size, you can follow the link in my description to the blog where I have the written pattern and there you can find sizes extra small to 4x. Okay, let's get into the materials. For the medium sized cardigan, you will need about 660 yards of worsted weight yarn. So this is Furls Crochet's Wims Merino Z-Twist yarn. And it is a 50-50 Superwash Merino and Nylon blend. And I love this yarn because it has a great squish to it, it's really comfortable and it's got like a really pretty like shine to it that I think gives a really nice depth to garments. Now for the knitting needles you want a pair of circular knitting needles 5.5 millimeter that is around 29 inches for the cord and you can also this is optional but what I like to do for the to work the front panels of this cardigan is to work with my Frills Crochet straight needles so be sure to check out their website to see all the different designs that they have they have some really beautiful um, different wood combinations that you can choose from okay and lastly you will need a tapestry needle and you'll need some stitch markers and a pair of scissors. Okay to get started I'm gonna do a long tail cast on so I'm just gonna make a slip knot here. Now you'll want to cast on 102 stitches. If you're fairly new or just returning to knitting I'll give you a little refresher on how to cast on. So you're going to take your thumb and your index finger and wrap the yarn around making like a V shape. And now you're going to take your needle, come up under your thumb and grab the thread that your index finger is holding. That will make a loop and you'll just cinch it down onto your needle. Make sure your needle is only grabbing the um, threads that are closest to you. So the thread that's closest to you that your thumb is holding and that your index finger is holding. Okay, so now that you have your 102 cast on stitches, or if you are doing a different size and grab the number of cast on stitches from my blog post, right here in this portion, I'm just going to show you a small sample just so you can understand the construction here. And then we'll move on to the full size garment later on. So for this first row, you're going to do a knit one, purl one to make our ribbing for the base of our back panel. So I did 10 rows of my ribbing, or you can do it until you reach two inches from your cast on stitches. So now that you've completed your ribbing on your back panel, we're going to go ahead and go into the actual body section of our work. And I'm just going to count these next rows starting at row one after our ribbing. 
So working row one, we're going to do knit all the way across. Okay, now you're going to turn your work, and for row two, we're just going to go ahead and purl. And you're just going to work stockinette stitch for a total number of 12 rows. Okay, so here's what your work should look like. Obviously longer. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Alright, so for row number 13, instead of doing a knit row like you would in stockinette, we're just going to purl instead. So you want to make sure you're purling on the right side of your work. If you're ending up on the wrong side of your work or the back side of your work on where you should be purling, then you most likely don't have the right number of rows. So just make sure you count those all out correctly. Alright, so this is how your pearl row should look like. These little ridges in the front. And now we're just going to continue into the same sequence. You're going to turn your work. You're going to purl on the back side. And then work in stockinette for another 12 rows. And repeat this same pearl row on the 13th row. So that'll be your sequence up until you reach the um, full back side of your work. Now that you have finished your back panel, going to grab your straight needles. If you choose to use them, you do not have to. You can continue using your circular needles. But this is what the um, back panel should look like. So at this point, you want to count 51 stitches in and place your stitch marker separating your two panels, your two front panels. And here are the Frost Crochet knitting needles. They are 5.5 millimeter and this is in the rosewood and ebony. I really like these because the end of the needles are really smooth and make stitches glide really nicely. Um, so it's just it seems like a really effortless motion to use these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer my stitches over to my straight needles. And to do this, I'm on a purl row, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and work the purl row on the right side. And I'm only going to work to the um, stitch marker that I placed, 
because then that will separate my two front panels. Now if you're not using straight needles for the front panels, you can definitely just continue using your circular needles and you'll just work to your stitch marker. All right, so now I have all my stitches transferred over to my straight needle. And then I have my other side panel just hanging out on my circular needles. If you're not moving any of your stitches over to a straight needle and you're continuing to use your circular needles and you need your other side panel to move off the circular needles, then what you can do is grab your tapestry needle and a scrap piece of yarn and just move all of those stitches off with your tapestry needle onto the scrap piece of yarn. So I wanted to make a note before I move on. I started working on the right side panel, so that's the right side if you're wearing the garment. And I wanted to point out that you want to make sure you attach your yarn. When you go to work on the left side panel, you attach your yarn to the inside of your work not the outside. You want to continue working as if you're working right to left. So from where you left off when you split your two panels in half. So you're just going to go ahead and work 117 rows on your left and right side panels. So now I'm going to show you on my little sample here. Once you get to row number 100, 118, we're going to decrease. So you should be ending up on a purl row. So you're going to go ahead and purl the first stitch and then purl the next two stitches together. So pick up this first one, pick up that second stitch here, and just purl those two together. And that'll give you your one decrease. If you didn't end up on a purl row here, your row count is probably off. So I would make sure and go back and recheck and count all of your rows to make sure you're on the right number row. And this is going to be the last row before you start your ribbing on the bottom. Once you have 118 rows, you're going to work your ribbing, so your knit one, purl one. And you're going to do the same amount of rows that you did for your back panel for your two front panels. And now I'm going to show you how to bind off your side panel. I'm going to knit one, knit two, and then you're going to grab that first stitch and bring it over your second stitch. Try and work it a little loosely. Um, that way it's easy to come off, unlike I did here, and that way it's not cinched up at the bottom and it has an even line at the bottom. Okay, here's what your panel should look like once you finished all your rows and did your ribbing and bound off. It has this nice even edge on the bottom here, which I like. Okay, so here's what your work should look like once you finish um, both your panels. 
So if you're wearing the cardigan, this is going to be your right side panel. And this will be your left side panel. So on your left side panel, you'll want to leave a long tail for the side for seaming up the edge. And for your right side panel, once you've bound off, you're going to keep your yarn live. You're not going to cut it because we're going to pick up stitches along the edge to make the border here. To do the border, you'll need your circular needles. And now I'm going to show you how to pick up the stitches along the edge here for your border. Okay, so you're going to insert your needle into that loop. And let's get a little closer here so you can see. And once you pick up stitches, you're going to take two strands of yarn so make sure that you're not just doing one because it can be a little flimsy so just make sure you're going through two strands of yarn or two bars to pick up your stitches and all you're going to do is put your needle through the two bars so you can see here and then wrap your yarn around the needle and pull up a loop and you just go ahead and do that um, all the way around. You're going to do that for a total number of 266 stitches. Once you've picked up all your stitches and reached the other side, so the other panel, you're going to go ahead and just knit rows across. So I did seven rows, but you can either make it a thicker border or a thinner border. It's up to you. And once you've reached your desired width on your border, you can just go ahead and bind off all the stitches the same as you did on the bottom of your front panels. So here's what your work should look like. Your border should look like this. Now we're going to go ahead and seam up the sides of our work. You're going to want to mark the base of your armhole and the bottom of your work just to keep everything together. So you want to grab a stitch marker and we're going to just bring the two bottom corners together and put our stitch marker there. This will just keep everything together while we seam up our work on the inside. Now we're going to go ahead and mark the base of our armhole. So you want to do either 29 rows counted down from the top or you'll want to do about seven and a half inches. And you want to make sure that the front and back are lined up correctly. So make sure you're counting or measuring on both sides to make sure you're lined up correctly. And also just go ahead and try it on before you start seaming just to make sure the armhole fits correctly and you're happy with the width of it. So now we are going to be working on the inside of our work. So we're going to turn everything inside out. And just make sure everything's lined up here. You're going to grab your tapestry needle 
and you're gonna go ahead and thread the yarn through it. So now we're just going to start going in and out, in and out, and you're going to make sure you get two strands of yarn on either side. Make sure you're trying to keep as even as possible so that you have a nice seam. So we'll go in from the inside, and then work back towards you, and then work away and work towards you, and just go ahead and do that all the way up the side until you reach the base of your armhole. So this is how your seam should look once you're finished. You should have a, a nice, even, clean looking seam here. So and now I'll go and get into working the sleeve border. So back to the inside of your work, you want to make sure that you keep your yarn live. Don't um, tie it off or anything or cut it because we're going to go ahead and tie it to our loose ends from our sleeve border. So that way I just, that's the way I like to do it, but you can do it whatever way you like. Now to get started with our sleeve border, you're going to make a slip knot and we're going to attach it to the base of our armhole. We're going to do it on the left side of the front and back here. So you're just going to take your needle and we're going to feed it through your slip knot through the hole here to get it started. Now you're going to go ahead and turn your work right side out. And you're going to bring up that loop that, from the inside. You're going to bring it forward. Now there's two different ways that you can do this border sleeve. This is the first way I'll show you, but I'll explain the second way you can do it later on in the video. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start picking up our stitches. So you're going to insert your needle. We're going to do this just the same way we did with our border. So you want to grab two pieces of yarn and go all the way around. So you'll go through two pieces of yarn, keeping it even all the way around, and you'll pick up a total number of 58 stitches. Now that you've picked up all your stitches, you're just going to work back and forth, um, just knitting rows, the same as you did with your border. So you'll just turn your work, knit, turn your work, knit. And I did mine for a total number of about 10 rows, or you can do it until you reach 2 inches, or your desired length. Now I'm just going to show you how to bind off on the sleeves here once you've reached 
your desired length. You'll knit one, knit two, and then you'll bring that first stitch over and move the stitch off of your needle. Now the second way that you can do the sleeve border, if you wanted to do it a little bit easier, is you can just work flat, work the border separately. So you would just cast on the 58 stitches and work your knit rows, so your 10 knit rows, cast off and then you would just seam your sleeve to the border of your work. Um, that is a little bit easier, although me, I'm all about less seaming is better, so I think that picking up the stitches is also pretty easy, but it's up to you. Either way you'd like to do it, it's the same result. Now that you've blended off all of your stitches, we're going to go ahead and work on the inside seaming at the base of your, your arm sleeve here. So you want to make sure that extra tail that you have, you just make sure it's cinched up correctly so that it's not, not all of the stitches are all loose. We're going to go ahead and turn our work inside out again. And you're gonna take your tapestry needle and we'll work off this loose tail. So we're going to seam this up a little bit differently than we did on the sides of our work. We're going to do a whip stitch, so you just insert the needle away from you and then just insert it the same way all the way across rather than going in and out, in and out. All right, now that you're finished with all your seaming, you're just going to tie the strands together at the base of your armhole. You'll weave in all your ends and you're all finished. When you turn your work right side out, this is what your finished sleeve should look like. And your finished cardigan is all ready. Thanks so much for following along. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I am always coming up with new knit and crochet patterns that are free on my blog. And I always include a video along with each pattern I release.